Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to yet another video and it is match review time and Bristol City have gone 11 games unbeaten in all competitions now with another draw but this time this draw feels different, it wasn't a, it wasn't a draw against Wigan it's a draw at Sunderland, uh, it's ended 1-1 at the Stadium of Light and it's not the draw that's a talking about this game, no it's something that's bigger than football at this point. Um, and that is, Bristol City's penalty record it is been 469 days since Bristol City last, were last awarded a penalty. That was Coventry away last year. And guess what? That streak is over. It's finished. Because Bristol City were awarded a penalty and we bloody scored it as well. This is how City lined up for the game. It was Max O'Leary in goal, back four George Tanner, Zach Viner, Rob Atkinson, Cameron Pring. Midfield two in a, in a double pivot of sorts, uh, Matty James and Joe Williams. Mark Sykes, Alex Scott, Alice Bermetti all played off the front three, um, which is Sam Bell up top. For Sunderland, it was Patterson in goal, Elise, uh, Danny Bath, Dan Ballard, Trey Hume, Dan Neal, Edouard Michu, Jack Clark, Ahmad Diallo, Patrick Roberts. Uh, they were the front to three off uh, Joe Geldart, um, who's on loan from Leeds. To begin with, the game ebbed and flowed. It, it wasn't great. Uh, both teams huffed and puffed. Not really much quality in the final third from Sunderland or from uh, City. But then Addis Metti hit the post, and after that, I think both teams decided, let's, you know, this, okay. Uh, almost as if something clicked in both sides. And then the games really started to develop and became, in the end, a really good game. Rob Atkinson, though, before we hit the post, had to come off injured, and Tom A Thomas Callas came on. Um, let's hope, let's desperately hope Rob Atkinson is absolutely fine, because he's a crucial player for City. And when Thomas Callas came on, he did fine, he was, he was pretty good, uh, he didn't make any mistakes, overall pretty solid. But Rob Atkinson, I think, offers another dimension um, for City at, the, at this moment. He's a threat from set pieces, he scored last week against Wigan. And he's really good um, at bringing the ball out uh, from centre-back. And he's left-footed as well, which is obviously another bonus um, at centre-back. So, look, desperately hope he's fine. If Thomas Callas is to play, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be too concerned. But I'd obviously rather prefer Rob Atkinson with the form he is in right now. Uh, but, yeah, let's just, just, let's just hope Rob Atkinson is absolutely fine because he's a very... Very crucial player for City at the moment. The game picked up intensity as it went on, and towards the back end of that first half, Sun were really on top and really forcing the, the question to City. Max already made a couple of good, very good saves, and we got in at half time at 0 0, but it always felt like if City were to continue that uh, back end of the first half momentum into the second half, it was going to be a bit of a tricky one. And we started the second half well, we started well, to be fair, we were really good, and uh, forced the question a couple of times to Anthony Patterson. Sunderland had a few moments on the counter-attack as well, I'm not denying that, absolutely not. Uh, but we were, I'd say we were the better team uh, for, the, for the second half, um, up until the first Sunderland goal. And the Sunderland goal really is is a bit of quality from Jack Clark. And yeah, George Tanner could do better. He is a bit naive in terms of allowing Jack Clark onto his right foot, showing him showing him inside when he should, should have shown him outside really and allowed him to put a cross into the box when we have Thomas Callas and Zach Viner there uh, to possibly head it away and probably will head it away so look it isn't great from George Tanner but it's a bit of quality from Jack Clark who cuts in and then puts it right into the, in basically out of O'Leary's reach and it's not in the corner it's out of O'Leary's reach it's, he can't really do much about it Max I can't blame him for the goal no chance um, and after that you feel oh, God not again you know, it's one of those games where you're on top, don't take your chances away at a very good, very good Sun and side, and feel like, oh God, it's gone now. But recently, City have not really done that. We've possibly not taken our moments in terms of take, making it count, but then we've gone and made sure we have made it count in the end, eventually, and that's what we did um, in this one. Nigel Pearson made a very curious. Triple substitution on seventieth on the seventieth minute. Naki Wells came on for Sam Bell. Andy Dryman came on for George Tanner at right, who was a right back. Harry Cornick came on for Anis Mametti, and it was quite interesting because 
Uh, obviously, Andy Vyman came in for Jack Tano's right back. Vyman moved uh, up into the right wing where Sykes was, and Sykes dropped in at right back, which is what basically he did for the first bit of the season, then realised actually Mark Sykes can score goals, so let's put him up the pitch. And in the end, that kind of benefited us, because then we really took control of the game after that, and we limited their threats, especially Ahmed Diallo, who um, carved us open a few times uh, earlier on in the second half, and especially later on in the second half, the first half, sorry. So look, I think, with hindsight, that was a really good tactical decision from Nigel Pearson. Um, yeah, we scored the goal, we uh, probably deserved to, and yeah, we got the penalty, which uh, r- remarkable, really. How how we've had so many pos- so so many blatant penalties since Coventry away up until this point, which we haven't got, and then prob- possibly one of the n- most dubious decisions uh, we've we've got in our way, and we've got the penalty. In my honest opinion, it's not a penalty, but I don't care. I really don't care. Um, if that happened against us in the 93rd minute, I would be pretty mad too. But, yeah, we've deserved a penalty uh, or a few penalties over the last uh, last year or so. Naki Well steps up and I'm thinking, right, he's not taking a penalty, professional penalty in, a bloody, age, in bloody ages. Um, he hasn't had the chance to. And um, he scores. Uh, Patterson goes the right way. But it sneaks sneaks past him, and it's a good penalty to be fair from Naki Wells. It's basically in the corner, uh, gives Patterson no real chance. But he, even though he does go the right way, so look, in the end, a fantastic point, and I'll take that uh, with both hands. And look, it's it, if I if you offered me a point before the game, I'd have taken it. I'd absolutely I absolutely would have taken it. So look, very happy, and I think we're now fifteenth. Hull at home next, and that's again going to be a tricky game because Hull and Liam Rossini have had a bit of a resurgence and have flown up the league. Uh, not to the extent of some of the teams, but have moved up into the uh, around the playoff debate. So, look, it's not, it's not going to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination, and uh, we have to be at it if we are to win that game. They are missing John McHale Seri, and they're missing someone else. I can't remember now. Um, Aaron Connolly, that's the one there, striker. So look, it's going to be a tough game against Hull, and yeah, we we will have to be at our best. But yes, a very productive point, a very good point at Sunderland, and yes, hopefully we can build on uh, build on from that uh, against Hull and then it's Manchester City in the cup. Uh, so yes, thank you very much for watching. Uh, keep safe, and I'll catch you all later. Cheers. Mm-hmm.